Looking footy, Jackie Felgate, ready to ask the hard oh. questions. Jack, over to you. <laughs> All right, first one's for you, Duck. For the right price, should Sydney consider trading Buddy Franklin? Oh, the simple answer is no. Um, <laughs> uh, interesting comments, though, from those two gentlemen. Plough saying he was selfish on the weekend. And the one thing I'll say about Buddy, generally those shots that I saw him have on, in those situations, he normally nails those goals, so he might have been a little bit off uh, within his own game. And Tony Shaw saying trade him. I wouldn't have thought that's going to happen. It's an interesting discussion. Yeah, it when is. A yeah. Player gets to the end of their near the end of their careers. If they still have some value, if you think you can pick up, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. If you can pick up some real talent to bring them in to refresh the the group, but it's Buddy Franklin, <laughs> and you don't trade Buddy Franklin, boys. I wouldn't have thought so. No, I wouldn't. All right, BT. Next one for you. Should there be a concussion sub? No, we've been down the sub road before, Jackie, and we've decided that it's no good for our game. Uh, injuries are part of the footy gods, and uh, I don't think we need to go there at all. So what's the difference between that and uh, an injury where someone does their ACL? Should they be given an opportunity to have someone come on the ground? We've been there, done that, and we, we, we all thought that perhaps it didn't work for our game. <laughs> all right, Tim, does Richmond still have the best defender in the AFL? If you're talking about uh, Grimes, I think he's a great defender. I don't think he's the best defender in the AFL. In fact, I think the West Coast Eagles have got two better defenders than Grimes in McGovern and Hearn. I think he's a great defensive player, but he doesn't give you a lot on the positive attacking side of the game. I think there's better defenders because they do both. They defend, they stop their man, and then they drive attack as well. So Won the game for the Tigers. No, he was yeah. great because he Plenty took intercept, intercept, marks. intercept marks in that last quarter. He's brave in the... He does all that, BT. There's no question about that. He's one of the better defenders in the game, as I said. But I think there are guys that do that and then they give you a lot more drive. I reckon that's what, exactly what he would like you saying because he likes to just fly under the radar and be underrated because I think he's very underrated. No, but do you think he's a better defender than either McGovern or Hearn? Not McGovern, but do he's, you think he's, he's, he's underrated. That's it, Bob. That wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> it wasn't. All right, Das, are Ruckman back in vogue? They're back big time, Jackie, and I'd like the three uh, clowns here to apologise. <laughs> Pay some respect to Ruckman for once. There's that night, Maxie Gorn won the game almost single-handedly. Brody Grundy on Friday night, I saw do a fantastic job mm. and uh, dominate. Todd Goldstein on Saturday night almost won the game for North. But we love whacking Ruckman. I know you guys, it's a low-hanging fruit. You think okay. it's uh, hilarious, but when they play Answers. the way they are, 6-6-6, six, 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 Ruckman are back big time. OK, answer this then. Why are the Ruckman winning the taps and then they're losing the stoppages then around the ground, the same teams that have got the well, dominant Ruckman? easy to set up midfielders when you've got uh, you know, someone winning the hit-outs. It's what you do around the ground. So Maxi Gorn had 60 hit-outs, but he had 19 possessions, kicked goals, got back, saved the game in defence. Brody Grundy had a whole heap of hit-outs, but it's what he did around the ground, Tim. I, I agree. So they're not just Ruckman. They're becoming another Ron Baller. I agree That's with That's pretty good, the new generation of Ruckman, yep. but uh, certainly they're not in any way... Uh, like you, you guys were in your day, Darcy. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty right. no good. He could go forward and kick goals too, apparently. Yeah. He told us this afternoon. All right, Tim. Yeah. Were we too harsh on John Morsefold over the first two rounds? Well, some people were. Uh, I wasn't. Oh. Uh, because <laughs> I wasn't too hard. I said... <laughs> you said he was under a lot of pressure on this very show. He was under a lot of pressure because Couldn't they lost... guarantee his position at the end of this year. I said that... You were worried yes. about the game plan. I said that I was worried about the game plan, and I was. And they're playing a lot better, particularly the last two weeks. We said at the time they looked a little bit confused about whether or not they were supposed to be defending, they weren't supposed to be defending, and they dismissed that. They said, oh, no, we haven't changed anything. And then Dyson Heppel said post game again at the weekend oh, it's taken us a few weeks just to get to understand what it is that we're supposed to be doing defensively so I think that started to click they're a great slingshot team still and I think John Warsfold is doing a very good job best slingshot team in the comp I think they are the best slingshot team in the competition yes now BT I want you to take a quick listen to Nathan Buckley after the game Tom you don't get the first one tonight mate ok no. you want someone else to go Pete Brody Grundy Mm, should Bucks, should we let Tom Brown ask the first question? Uh, it should be whoever wants to ask the first question. Um, I'm not sure that Bucks should have the right to say where the questions are coming it's from. Tommy Brown's domain. It's, yeah. He asked the yeah. first question and I, I feel slighted on behalf of Tom. I, I did too. I think, I think there's a please explain should go to the Collingwood football. Are there any instructions about who gets the first go? Well, 
I think Tom's always there. He's always there late on a Friday and Saturday night, isn't he? And the others half are almost half dead sitting back there. there. <laughs> I think you're all being a little facetious. I think Bucks was that was a little bit of tongue in cheek, so don't take that too serious. Oh, well, that I right? didn't. I just got asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> that is all for Inside Thank Fifty. Thank you, Jackie. We'll catch up with you again later for an update. So it's time to intro the Chemist Warehouse Defensive Player of the Day. And there hasn't been much joy for the Crows fans just yet, but get excited about this. Alex Keith has been brilliant. Shine light in defence for the Adelaide Crows and this chase on Luke Davies. Uniac stopped a certain goal on Saturday night. It's a good story, Alex Keith. Went and played cricket, was drafted the Gold Coast Suns as one of their 17-year-old priorities. He said to the Gold Coast Suns, don't draft me, I'm not coming and I won't play there. Went and played cricket for six years. He's about 14 games in, starting to become a very good player. Yep.